Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It is Daniel the Healer, who's going to be on our show today. He focuses on basically um, how people are divine, and we're going to discuss all about energy healing and some other topics, um, and it's going to be a very interesting show. So stay tuned as I introduce my very special guest, Daniel the Healer. Daniel, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Hello, hello, Stacy. Nice of you to have me here. I'm an intuitive holistic energy healer. Now, this is kind of out there. Intuitive means that I receive information beyond the regular five senses. Mm -hmm. And holistic means that I work with you on your four levels of existence, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. As such, I can do things that a normal healer cannot do because I will look at the interaction between your four bodies and how that all unfolds. I find that very interesting. Now, you said that um, how everyone is divine and you wanted to go a little bit in depth about that. Now, how are all people divine? And what do you exactly mean by that? All right, well, first of all, all of every creation is the building block of all of creation is light and love and we're also made out of light and love when you look at uh, our uh, atomic and molecular structure there's more empty space than there is anything else right. for us to be solid is really just an illusion yes <laughs> Basically, we are on the lowest dimension that exists, on the first, second, and third dimension, uh, depth, width, and height, you know, the cube in which we live. Right. And in that low dimension, love and light have so much density that they have matter. But regardless of that, we're still made out of the same stuff. And right. All of the universe is made out of the same stuff. And all and the divine God and goddess are made out of the same stuff. And because we're made out of the same stuff, you know, in, in the Bible said, and God created man. Well, there is no quote unquote Home Depot in the heavens. It's like God reached into himself and created man out of it. So we're also made in his image. And we're, quote, unquote, all children of God. And when you look at us being all children of God, well, if you have a prince, you know, the king, and he has a son and the prince, and the king dies and the son grows up, what does the prince become? Yeah. Prince becomes the king. Yes. And so children of God, when we grow up, what do we become? God, God and goddesses. So basically here on planet Earth, where God and goddess is in training. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between us and the divine, except that divine has been added for way, 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 way longer. Yes. More experience. Right. So we need to own our divinity. And when we come from that point of view, then our life changes. Yes, it's so very true. You know, I um, I always felt like we are here, like I always called it the boot camp, and we're here in training. And yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yes, it is a boot camp, except that the training we're doing here is uh, we write the course. Yes, it's like see, we we exist. We're we're eternal being. Mm -hmm. We exist and we exist in our soul state. Yeah. Our soul exists as an energetic structure of light mm -hmm. in the eternal now. Right. And as such, it's, there's no time. So right. there is no agenda. So the soul is us, but who we are with all the experiences we've ever had, even in the physical there's the four kingdoms, the uh, plant, the mineral, the plant, the animal, and the human kingdoms. And we kind of go through all these experiences. We don't start as a human. Right. 
And so, but every time we hear, we accumulate some wisdom, some knowledge, some something that yes. we we learn that adds to expanding our consciousness. And so our soul is the repository of all our experiences that we've ever had. And so because we're in timelessness, it's like, oh yeah, I want to deal with this. And hmm, but today's such a fine day. And manana manana, it doesn't matter. And a thousand years go by and we haven't done anything. And so we decide from time to time that we become physical because here we're in time space. So there is time and you can have an agenda. And so we grab the least amount possible that we can grab to still have an identity as who we are because this body cannot hold all of our soul. So we just grab a little bit. We come through the veil of time space. We attach to this body that our parents have prepared. <laughs> And we forget who we are. But in our soul state, you know, it's like, um, oh, I think I want to have another physical lifetime. Okay, so let me find some parents. So on the bulletin board goes, I'm looking out for a mother and father to, to provide, uh, be parents for me. And that's my agenda. And the parents say, well, okay, our agenda is such and such and such. And our two agendas interface with each other. And I can learn from you and you can learn from me. So in our soul state, we decide who our parents are, when and where we are born, uh, uh, in what country, in what social milieu, um, all the major players who are children, uh, mate, uh, etc. And then, like I said, we come here and we forget who we are. So it's like putting on the blinders. Yeah. And you already set up the obstacle course when you were still in your soul state. And you come here, put on the blinders, and you start running. Mm -hmm. And here comes the first obstacle and you fall flat on your face and uh, and if there and so you know you get yourself together and, and stuff like that and you continue running and you flat fall again on flat on your face and if there's a pattern in right. how you feel what the messages are uh, the environment you are in you um then now you have a pattern you can work with and out of that pattern emerges a learning you know it's it's funny um 20 percent of drivers have 80 percent of the accidents <laughs> there's the people who go into relationships uh <laughs> falling in love four weeks later over yeah bad bad connection how do you attract continuously that same stuff? Well, that's who you project to be out of your energy field. Right. And so as an energy healer, I work with that. That's so anyway, nice. we do need to, um, on a daily basis, you know, there's this thing, uh, something happens to do. What would Jesus do here? Well, mm -hmm. not everybody believes in Jesus, but pretty much everybody believes in God or some sort of a divine figure. So, you, you know, you, you run into an issue, you run into a challenge. Mm -hmm. Me as a divine being, how would I best respond to this? Don't automatically uh, explode and, and get angry and, and not do that. No, count one, two, three, four, Five, deep breath and what would I do as a divine being in the morning when you get out of bed you know you're, you put your feet on on the side yes. uh, you don't get up yet and you surround yourself with light and you basically imagine yourself in a bubble of light lots of brilliance mm -hmm. and um, remind yourself I am a divine being and you see, if you do this on a regular basis, your life is going to be different. Right. It feels very enlightening. Even just to hear you say that, you know, that we are a divine being makes you, it gives me a feeling of, of a, a lightness where I feel like I'm rising just by hearing that concept itself. Um, 
we are divine beings. And do you do you believe in reincarnation? Do you believe yes, that humans come back? I do. We we come back on a regular basis, and uh, you know, I mean, the concepts are rather out there. But there's this universe. In this universe, there's about 650 different races. Um, so we come maybe as one of the race. Uh, but there's other universe. There's the multiverse. There's thousands of universes like ours. You know, ours is like what? Uh, they say now, I think, 13 billion light years across. That's, okay. that's unimaginable. Yeah. Yet we're just this one little universe out of many, many, many. And we can have experiences everywhere. Right. This universe is interesting because this is a free will universe. Mm -hmm. And the free will universe means that what we choose, we, as, as being divine beings, there are certain things that um, we, we receive. Yes. Uh, and when you say, you know, we're in, made in God's image, well, God creates we can create right. god have power we can have power it's called your personal power right um god manifests we can manifest god right. can make choices we can make choices mm -hmm. so in a free will universe we're learning what our will is that's why god doesn't intervene oh how come uh, all these children were killed and why didn't God intervene? Well, because it was the free will of the person who killed those children and God does not intervene. This is what we're learning here. Uh, having choice, having free will. And so right. that uh, is kind of a, a a deep responsibility. You yeah. can't like you need, you need we live in a, in a society you need to you can't just say oh i'm gonna kill everybody um so there's this whole thing you know do unto others what others would do unto you and and stuff like that right um, so life is is in that sense is really interesting because we can make the choices of what we wish to achieve what we wish to create uh, and where we want to go we are basically in charge of our destiny mm -hmm. there's no outside force that says this that yes if you look at your soul as an outside force because you're in the physical and not connected to your soul then yes it's like this strange thing that decides what happens in my life but when you uh, find out that you're divine and reconnect with your soul, then all of a sudden your life is like, you have control over it. You, you're you empowered. You can make changes. If you created it, you can uncreate it. If somebody right. else created it, you're at the mercy. Right. So how can you re recreate with your soul? How can you um, connect and recreate? All right, so uh, I need to kind of bring some concepts in. Is that of okay? Of course. Yes. All right. So like I said earlier, we have these four bodies, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Your spiritual yes. body includes your energy field. Your energy field, most people have heard about aura and chakras. Mm -hmm. uh, more of you lives in your energy field in your spiritual body than in the other three bodies combined. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about chakras here. Uh, there's plenty. First of all, chakra is an uh, old Sanskrit term. It's, it's, it's been around for thousands of years. It only came into um, the West um, <laughs> Mainly with the Beatles, who who uh, got stoned on acid and and played around with the gurus in India, and then some of these concepts came here. Right. Uh, so chakras are like vortices. A vortex is um, uh, when when you uh, a hurricane is a vortex. Mm -hmm. uh, it spins and it comes smaller and smaller and bigger on top. Anyway, yes. so you have energy vortices. You have seven of them in that are connected to your body, the, your crown, which connects to the divine, your right. um, 
third eye where you you have all your intuition your throat is your expression your heart is the love the right. solar plexus is your uh, connection to your power and to your emotion your second chakra with creativity and your root chakra which is on the tip of the coccyx which is your safety security center yes so your chakras are basically your loudspeakers and your microphones to your world right you know you you encounter somebody on some level you immediately know who they are it's mm -hmm. because they exude their energy and you read that energy and it's immediate. Now, just because you're not in touch with your intuit intuition where uh, this gets, gets all translated in your um, in your crown, in your, sorry, in your third eye and mm -hmm. gets put together into words and, and concepts just because you're not in touch with it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. So you you so when when you um you have a concept okay mm -hmm. uh let's let's take the person with his failed relationships every three months they have another one and it's the same thing all the time right well it, uh, you also have a conscious a subconscious and an unconscious mind and in your subconscious you hold certain programs uh these programs, um, if you're aware of what happens in your subconscious mind, then you're aware of it, but most often you're not. But these programs uh, kind of create mind talk. And the mind talk uh, creates emotions, the emotions creates energies, it goes into your um, endocrine system and it gets projected into your world. And so you attract who you are. Right. If you're an angry person, then the universe reads, oh, this is an angry person. We need to send them more anger producing situation. Right. And if you're a loving person, then uh, and everything's you, you've processed all your stuff. No more mommy, daddy, crazy. Uh, they did me wrong stuff and, and you're at peace. Uh, then your life that comes to you is also produces more peace. Right. Now, where did we want to go here? <laughs> I got so far out into other concepts. Um, well, I, I love the fact of um, energy healing and, and how beneficial it is. I like to use the chakra bowls. I find that the vibrations of the chakra bowls really um, relax me and tune me um, and also help me align with myself. Now, you know, some people believe there's only seven chakras. Some people say there's many more than seven chakras. We're just um, aware of the seven. Um, well, I work with the 12 chakra system. Okay. All right. And, and uh, you know, your eighth chakra, which is below you in my system, which is below your feet, is your auric chakra. It maintains the aura. Okay. And when I do energy healing, I look at people's auras. I look at people's chakras. I, I know how to tune up, how to reset other people's chakra because sometimes it can go wrong. Yes. And your chakras are really important because if one of your chakras is not in tune, is not uh, set up properly, then the signals get mixed. Yes. And you project, oh, I want to make lots of money. And, and then the, the signals get mixed. And on the other side comes out, I want to be real poor. <clears throat> so it's really important that you keep your energy field uh, kind of in tune that's what we do um, on a weekly basis when I do my free healings I tune up everybody's energy fields so that they have another week and it helps them when everything functions well you can really own that you're divine much more easily than when yes. you're not 100 percent 100 percent now where can people find that that website where you offer the um, energy healing at the website that I do my uh, free healings at is called IHealYourPain.com. So the first time you actually have to register and there's a button and you put in your name and email address. And then um, from then on and a password and from then on, every time you want, you can just log in and you can, I go through uh, a, 9.2 tune up where I clear up people's energy fields, then uh, 
I send them more energy in the form of chi balls. I work with their brains, make sure that all the nerves are connected. Uh, I align the skeletal structure and uh, then we do some gazing for their own issues. And there's a few more other things that I do. And by doing it on a weekly basis, you know, we <laughs> it's like you bought a car and then it's 5,000 miles and you take it for an oil change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you say, okay, I've done my oil change. The car is good to go forever. No, and our bodies are the same thing. Uh, your energy field, you interact with other people's energy fields. Right. And the energies out there in the world right now are, they're not good. No. There's a lot of sadness, a lot of pain, a lot of terror, uh, a lot of fear, a lot of how am I going to survive uh, when, when you look at all the current wars and, yes. and, and all this hatred. And we we live in this soup. Yes. And so if we don't pay attention, then the soup takes over. hundred percent. Pay attention to you, who you are, then you can create, you can create, you can keep yourself clean and you can, as a divine person, you can quote unquote, shine your light. And yes. when you shine your light, when you're then you're, and when you push love into your world, Right. Then the bad stuff cannot, it's like fish trying to swim upstream. The bad stuff cannot come into you if yes. you push it out. But if you're in, in survival mode and you, and, and you do need energy and, and you kind of grab the energies that are here, then you absorb with those energies a lot of bad stuff. Yeah. And so during these uh, healing sessions, which are, um, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time on the website that I heal your pain dot com. Then um, I do an oil change every week, so to speak. I like that to, to keep you to keep you going to to make certain that nothing has happened during that week that reduces your vibration and that makes you smaller. I think I'm going to join you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be cool, yes. Now, many people, I'm sure, they would want to know, is there any way that people can do any type of exercises at home to unblock themselves or to, to get rid of the negative energy that they feel that is immersed in, inside of them? Well, yes, there is there's many things you can do. Uh, I But I think... I don't know if we have enough time for that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to mention a, a few. Okay. Uh, first of all, your aura is kind of this egg-shaped um, container. Yes. It does have a distinct skin, which I perceive as uh, kind of a soap bubble, a giant soap bubble, uh, shimmering, um, uh, rainbow-colored, and... Uh, if you take an egg, a chicken egg, mm -hmm. and you put the chicken egg, I'm going to do it with this crystal. Okay, so this is the egg. Okay. And you put that egg into your hand, mm -hmm. and you just make sure that you continuously make sure that there is contact. And you can press as hard as you want. The egg will not crack. Now, it's, you know, if you don't hold it right or there's a crack in the egg already that you hadn't seen, then you're going to, the egg is going to crack and you're going to have eggs all over you. But <laughs> you can put a towel over it and do it in the sink and, and you can test it. You can, you can not, with as strong as you are, break this egg. Well, our aura is the same. If it is in the correct shape. Yes. Meaning this egg shape. So you can kind of, See, a lot of it happens in your imagination when you when you work with the energies. But in your imagination, you can go and you can, like from the inside, you can go and feel your aura. Mm -hmm. And if there's a nick, then you can fix that nick. Or if there's a dent, then you can push it out. So one thing you have to do is that your aura is, is an egg shape. You have to make certain that you're grounded, connected to the earth. 
and there's various things you can do. Um, you can hold a hematite, mm -hmm. uh, you can go and hug a tree, you can walk barefoot uh, on some grass. Um, you can imagine roots growing out of your uh, soles of your feet into the ground. You need to be grounded. You also need to be connected to your life force. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is kind of this. Uh, the crown. For practical, uh, just for practical imagination, is kind of this uh, sphere, 30, 40 feet in diameter, uh, brilliant white sphere that's um, uh, maybe 200 feet up. Mm -hmm. Your chakras need to be uh, functioning well. So you can take an individual chakra, you can spin it real fast and then slow it down and, and hold it and then let it go, which like rebooting a computer reboots your chakra. So if you do just these uh, one, two, um, well, one more thing. Uh, you, if, if you have a lot of stuff, energetic stuff um, uh, that you've picked up from others, then you clean the inside of your aura. You basically walk through a very fine screen and the screen will just screen everything out that is not is not supposed to be there. So just these four exercises will make a tremendous a difference in your life. Things will go smoother. Things uh, you will have more synchronicities. Mm -hmm. um, so these are these are just a few things that you can do with with your aura and your chakras with your energy field. But you also need to, and that's slightly different, you need to be aware that you create your own reality. Mm -hmm. And you do that with your belief, attitude, thought, feeling, choices, and decisions. So you need to keep track of your mind talk. And anytime the mind talk comes in, oh, I'm not good enough to do this. And then, uh, that, that needs to be ruthlessly eliminated. You need to, Keep those. Uh, yeah. So when I talked at the very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, when we talked about running with a blinders through the obstacle course and you fell a few times. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you're looking at your pattern here. Well, yeah. part of the pattern is what do I believe? If you believe that the world is a bad world and that it's a dangerous world, then that's what is going to happen in your life. Right. You're going to have a dangerous and bad world. If you believe that you can't trust anybody, then I'm sorry. You will not be able to trust anybody. Right. And so you need to really make certain that on all levels of your existence, the, um, the in your conscious, the subconscious, and your unconscious mind, yes. that you create a belief structure a uh, thought pattern structure and, and that you make choices and decisions so that it takes you down the path that you want to go. Right. And then, then you can create whatever it is that you wish to create. I mean, uh, I, I look, you have a book, Empower Yourself. <laughs> uh, that's one of the ways you empower yourself. You, you make certain that uh, everything works well. And, and that is um, in alignment with what you and <laughs> set up as your right. destiny. You, right. you know, don't, don't just accept, oh, um, you know, you've been given a destiny. Even, yes. even death is part of your own. You, not you, consciously, most often people do not know that but you unconsciously in cahoots with your soul decide when it's your time to go so many, many people say you know i get it seems like it's a myth from what you're saying that when your journey is done that's when we leave so it's yeah, really when you came and you had your agenda and you fulfilled check 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 okay no more check marks okay i'm out of here okay Now I had the opportunity to leave. I was I was done with what I needed to do in my life. And that was about four years ago. And I said, no, I think 
I'm going to now take an elective. Mm -hmm. So I chose what I wanted to do. And that gave me a whole new lease on life. Yes. I think the mind is a very powerful tool. And I think our, our, you know, when we're mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally connected, I think that's when we're at our most powerful mode and that anything could be possible. You know, as if we, if we stay connected with ourselves and we're aligned with ourselves, you know, there's always messages that come through guiding us and, and leading us into the right, right paths, but we have to be connected and we have to listen, you know, because I think our, our body, our, our intuition is always guiding us and giving us the right answers. It's our choice if we're going to listen. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you got the message. <laughs> But if I, you know, I've always been intrigued. I was reading not too long ago a book and it was talking about the different color auras, that there's not just one color, there's several different colors and that each person can contain maybe one, one color, or is it more than one color? And, and, you know, some people can see auras and some people can't, is, is, is there a way that you can, you can see the aura around you and what does it actually represent? Because some people aren't familiar with it. And, uh, and maybe you can go a little bit more in depth. You were talking about auras before about the colors and what they represent. I not that familiar with color oh, okay. per se, but, uh, I've had several aura pictures taken. Sometimes you can go when you go to one yes. of those expos, mm -hmm. uh, um, consciousness expos, yes. and mm -hmm. there's going to be somebody with a camera and, and, they will take a picture of your aura um, and it will show the chakras and, and, and colors. Now, yes. auras can hold many, many different colors. Okay. Um, there is, though, generally a color that is more pervasive than others, and that's, quote, unquote, the main. But um, yeah, yeah, in one of the last ones, I kind of had a... Uh, uh, almost like a, a helmet of white. And the person said, these are your angels and your spirit helpers that are with you and, and are supporting you. And um, it's it's funny because, you know, your chakras have colors yes. um, and your heart chakra is green, but love is pink. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a lot of pink, then there is a, a lot of a lot of love in your life and if your shock if your aura has gold in it then you're on your soul's path mm -hmm. and um uh, the other colors i don't really uh yeah well, there's one more thing some of the colors are like really bright and vivid and these are true colors but some colors have uh like gray shadows over them and then these are your challenges and your, and the things that you have to work with. And okay. um, so that's the little bit I know about the colors in the aura. I don't see colors. Okay. I see, I see movement. Mm -hmm. Now, what's important in an aura, and we all have different colors. We are all so very, very, very unique. Um, but uh, if your aura is stagnant, that's the it doesn't really move it has to move it can move on its there's no rule between one person and another it moves this way or that way no okay. but movement means that you have passion that you you that you're involved in something that you really like if you're like uh oh god um another day uh, <laughs> breakfast uh shower work come home TV, have a beer, go to bed, and it's like <laughs> seven days a week, your aura is going to be totally stagnant. You you do need to... Um, the, the divine does three things really well. The divine grows, becomes more in consciousness, um, uh, learns, adds to knowledge, expands, that's number one. Two, yeah. the divine loves, touches, and heals. Three, 
the divine creates passionately. So if you do these three things, and the love, touch, heal doesn't only mean that you love and touch and heal others, but that you let others love, touch, and heal you. It's a two-way street. Right. So receiving is a is a big deal. So yes. we're, we're back in the divine. But passionate, you need to have passion. That moves your aura. That gives you juice. That yes. gives you joie de vivre. That, you, that moves you forward. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And you see when, when people are passionate about something, they become very energetic. They become very, you know, they're, they're um, even, even the way they glow, their skin, everything changes about them when they, when they show that compassion within them, it kind of shines through. Yes, indeed. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today, what would you like to emphasize some takeaways for the, the listeners? What I really want to emphasize is you need to own your divinity. That it, you you just the earth is not a penal colony where those who did bad in the skies are sent to 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 uh, pay penance. Right. This this is a learning ground. As such, uh, don't really care about what others say about you. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to learn. Don't be afraid to mistake to make mistakes. We are here to learn. Perfection has to go out the window. Yes. Um, it's it's such a bear. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember the time when I would not uh, approach anything new uh, out of fear that I'd get humiliated because I'd make a mistake. Right. You you can't go there. It's just mm -hmm. so keep yourself clean, shine your light and own your divinity. I love it. I love it. Now, what are different services that you offer to people and different, and I think you have a course too, don't you? I do have a course and it's a little far out there. It's a 24 lesson course, uh, 15 minute video lessons that uh, goes over the complete uh, for holistic functioning and uh, the first Four courses teach you about why you're here and what you do. And then the next four go about the spiritual, the next four about the um, emotional, then the mental, then the uh, physical. And then the last four classes tie it all together and allow you to do healing, mm. to become a healer. And it gives you some sort of an idea of um, how to work with it now. I've done this for 45 years. So uh, a lot of the things that, you, you know, I mean, I have a healing team. There are about two, 300 spirit helpers that are here and they communicate with me. And, and so anyway, if you are looking for a private session, you'd go to my other website, danielthehealer.com. And I do something which is called a life essence reading where I look at about uh, 250 different aspects of your energies and tell you where you stand spiritually in your development. I do some a modality that I learned using quantum touch as such. Mm -hmm. I can align people's skeleton long distance over, over the computer. Oh, nice. So if you have a hip that's out or, or a vertebrae that's not in the right place, I can put it back in place. I do psychic surgery. Um, there, I fix areas in your aura and in your energy field that don't work well, but I also work with removal of curses and other negative external. I do cellular memory release because sometimes uh, we processed something, but if it was traumatic, then the cells remember and each cell has a nucleus and you have about 100 trillion cells. And so you have these hundred and trillion memories in you that remember the trauma that you went through. And right. so that has to be removed magnetically out of your energy field. I uh, help people clear spaces. Um, that means, you know, you go to a new house and, and uh, the previous owner had a, um, somebody suffered a lot and that suffering is stuck. It's stuck in the walls. It's stuck in the floor. So I 
I heal animals and uh, I assist in the death process for those that cannot let go. So these are basically stuff that uh, I do on a one-on-one -on -one private level. And for that, it's danielthehealer.com. Wow. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, Daniel. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope to see more of you. I would love to get more in depth about some of these, you know, conversations and topics that we went over, but uh, you, you provided some great information today. And uh, yes, we all are divine and uh, we definitely are here in boot camp. and there is something higher at a higher level waiting for us. And uh, I believe that once we, we leave, we are destined to, to take another role somewhere else and our energies will be put to good use. So thank you so much. This has been an amazing time with you. You're most welcome. And to all our listeners, I wish you all the best. Farewell and be well. Thank you so much, Daniel. You have a great day. You too. Take care. You too.